Hello, everyone, and welcome to First Baptist Church Prayer and Bible Study. Uh, my name is Alan Crosby, and uh, we meet every week at this time at 5 o'clock uh, for a time of Bible study and for prayer. So uh, I hope you can join me each week, invite others to join in with us as well. Uh, it's a very informal time, a great day for a cup of coffee. Hope you have yours and uh, have your Bible open and ready. Uh, so that you can follow along with me here in just a few minutes. Uh, today, just for a few moments, uh, I'm going to go to the Psalms, and we're going to look at Psalms 51. And uh, Psalm 51 is a very well-known passage of Scripture, and uh, we'll deal with that here in just a few moments. And if you have a prayer request, then uh, I invite you to uh, type those in on the in the comments area on Facebook so that I can... Uh, Note them when it comes time to prayer. Uh, good to have you on with us uh, today, Bob and Linda. And uh, I think there are a few others too that I'm not not seeing uh, their names pop up yet. But uh, anyhow, just try to give them just a few minutes to, to come online. Well, we've had a rainy, cold week. It feels like fall or almost winter time. I know that... Uh, <laughs> There are uh, many people up in North Texas that are under ice and snow. <clears throat> just uh, glad it hasn't got that cold for us just yet. But uh, again, if you have uh, any prayer requests, then please list those. Of course, you can always uh, send them to me privately if you'd like to uh, prayer at fbcjewett.org. And uh, I'll be sure to uh, pray for your request uh, throughout the week. All right, um, let me re just remind you of a couple of things. Uh, one is that we have our online Bible study every week for adults at 9.45, and uh, that will come on again this Sunday at 9.45. Uh, our adults are going through Explore the Bible. Uh, they're looking at the book of Isaiah right now. And uh, so if you can't come on campus and uh, gather with us, then please be sure to uh, to dial in on Facebook and on YouTube. We pre-record that every Friday, and uh, and we put that out at 9:45 each Sunday. Uh, we will have uh, Sunday school for all our age groups um, here on campus each Sunday at 9:45 as well. And uh, our Sunday school adults are working through the Book of Isaiah. Uh, I believe the Brother Johnny's class is doing a different study for the young marrieds, and then uh, our children are doing, I think, something a little bit different as well. But I want to encourage you, if at all possible, to come and be with us here on campus. At 11 o'clock, we go live on YouTube, and uh, if you can't come, then please be sure to join us on YouTube at 11. We do that every every Sunday for those of you who can't come or who are not comfortable uh, coming. Saw a few new faces this uh, last week in church and uh, slowly but surely uh, people are getting back to church again. So uh, I want to continue to pray for those of you who are still not comfortable with coming and uh, we understand and uh, we're going to continue to pray for you and with you about this matter and hopefully uh, we'll get back to normal here pretty soon. Um, this uh, will be in the bulletin this Sunday, and I've uh, just talked with some folks today about this. Uh, this year for Thanksgiving, uh, we are going to have a meal. It's going to be announced this Sunday, but we're going to have a meal here at the church in the Family Life Center for all of our church. And uh, that's going to be right after church, uh, the Sunday just prior to Thanksgiving. I forgot the exact date. But uh, just thought I'd throw that out there, be praying with us about that. I know there's still concerns about COVID, and uh, we understand that. We're going to be as careful as we possibly can, but uh, we hope that you can join us uh, for that uh, holiday meal. Well, um, this morning or this afternoon, I want to look at Psalm 51 here for just a few minutes, and uh, we're going to see David's prayer of repentance. Uh, this is uh, something that this particular passage of Scripture I think that all of us can uh, take to heart and uh, use as we uh, as we pray. I, I don't know about you, but I like to go into the scripture and sometimes pray through the verses. So uh, there have been many times in my life where I've prayed through uh, these very, very verses. 
um, what we need to note as we go into this passage is, first of all, is that God is a holy God and a righteous God. And the Bible also tells us that he, they hate sin. But we also know that he, he loves us very much. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life. So in Christ, there, there is hope for anyone who will turn to Christ for forgiveness and for salvation. But God is holy and we are not. Uh, we are not perfect. Uh, God's still working on us. Uh, he is perfect. He's omnipotent. He's all-powerful. He's omniscient, all-knowing. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere all the time. He is sovereign God, King of kings, and Lord of lords, and He is still on the throne today, praise God. So um, as we approach a holy God, we must approach Him with reverence and uh, with the right kind of fear, as in respect. And uh, we also know that He loves us and cares very deeply for us, so we are Approach him as Abba Father. But uh, he is judge and he is also our Redeemer. He loves us with an everlasting love and desires a relationship with him. But uh, God had to make provision for us in the person of his son, Jesus Christ, because of the sin issue. And uh, since Adam and Eve in the garden, we've had sin in the world and we've lived in a very broken society. But God paved the way for us to have a right relationship with him through the cross of Calvary, through His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. In light of this fact, in light of what God has done for us, in that He sent His Son who knew no sin to die for us who are sinners, uh, why do we continue to sin? Why is it that we still struggle with sin? Well, uh, I've got bad news and i got good news. The bad news is, that as long as we draw breath, as long as we're in this body, this fleshly body, we're going to wrestle with sin and we're going to have to deal with the sin issue. The Bible makes it very clear that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And we're going to talk more about that in just a few moments. But uh, most people, I don't think, view themselves as sinners. When I say that, I'm talking about those who never come to church, those who are don't claim to know God, and for those of us who... Uh, come to church and those of us who are believers in the Lord Jesus Christ we often view ourselves as uh, you know we're not we're not that bad uh, but the Bible paints another picture of who we are the Bible says again that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God over in Isaiah 64 verse 6 the Bible says all of us have become like something unclean and all our righteous acts are like a polluted garment all of us wither like a leaf and our iniquities carry us away like the wind. As we uh, come to this text, uh, before we get into it, there, there was a man uh, who was very well liked. He had a lot of power and prestige, and uh, yet this man sinned against God. The, the Bible says that this man had a heart for the Lord, and, and he, he loved the Lord, and yet he failed. God and failed him miserably. The Bible says that he committed adultery with Bathsheba, and uh, this man also uh, had Bathsheba's husband uh, put in such a position that it jeopardized his life and ultimately cost him his life. So you could say conspiracy to murder as well. Um, and uh, we know this man's name. His name was David, King David much beloved and uh, and he did love the lord and thank god god was a god who forgave david and continued to use david uh, someone said your sin will carry you further and you want to go keep you longer than you want to stay and it'll cost you way way more than you want to pay and i think david found this out because you see the reality is is that because of david's sin and david may have thought that he would get away with it but it impacted not only him but it impacted family. It impacted those who were around him. Um, let's look at this passage of scripture. I'm, I'm not going to read through it uh, on the front end. We're just going to kind of work through the verses. But uh, I want you to notice with me in Psalm 51, uh, David's confession of sin. The Bible talks about here, I think we, we see the sovereignty of God. Uh, the Bible says, have mercy upon me, O God. According to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. 
So David uh, cries out to God. He cries out to the one who is sovereign. Sovereignty means uh, complete independence and self-government. And the reality is God is sovereign. God's mercy was David's only hope. And David realized that. He was guilty of lust, adultery, rebellion, and murder. Uh, God's merits were David's only help. David did not remind God of his past accomplishments. He did not remind God of how he trusted him uh, when he killed the giant, Goliath. He did not say to God, I know that I've done wrong, but look at all the good that I've done. No, David cried out for the mercy of God upon his life because he knew and he accepted the fact that he had sinned against God. As believers in Christ, when we sin, we must throw ourselves at the mercy of Almighty God. Um, when we think about what it is that God did, did for us and how He loves us, you know, it should break our hearts when we sin against Him. Uh, John tells us in the New Testament, if we walk in the light as He Himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make Him a liar and His word is not in us. David threw himself at the mercy of God and he asked God to forgive him and to cleanse him. David was honest with himself and with God. Look at verse 2 and 3. He says, Wash me through thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Old David's heart was hurting and he, he could not get the thought out of his mind of what he had done and how he had sinned against God. So he faced the reality of sin. He faced its depths. And that's what you and I must do. We, we can't just dismiss it, uh, no matter how minor we might consider it. We can't just dismiss our sin, but uh, we need to remember that it was our sin that sent Jesus to the cross. And He should put us on our knees and we should face the depths of our sin. His sin had left a dark spot on his soul. He did not take his sin lightly. I think sometimes we're guilty of forgetting that Jesus died for our sin. To continue our, our sin is to make a mockery of God. It is like telling God, I don't care what you did for me. I'm going to do what I want to do. Charles Finney said, the first step to forgiveness of sin is a deep repentance, a breaking down of heart, a getting down into the dust before God with deep humility and forsaking sin. Folks, there is a judgment day to face. And apart from Jesus Christ, you and I are hopeless. But I'm thankful that we can come and we can throw ourselves at the feet of God and He will have mercy on us when we come to Him through His Son. He faced, David faced his sin's hideousness in verse 3. He says, For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is always before me. He couldn't, he couldn't shake it. He was trying to live with all the guilt, and he could not continue on. Sin must be faced, and it also must be forsaken and forgiven. Then in verse 4, we see that David faced the repulsiveness of his sin, the repulsiveness of his sin. Um, verse 4 again says, Against you, you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight, that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. He realized that his sin brought pain to the heart of God. I've already mentioned this. Don't, don't misunderstand what I'm about to say, but look, when, when we sin, it, it's never just about us. Uh, it impacts those around us. Uh, King David's for generations to come would be impacted as a result of his sin, impacted negatively, I might add. But, um, but David is just pushing all that aside because he knew that that was true. But pushing all that aside, David is focused on the Lord. And he says, against you and you alone, I have sinned. Again, not dismissing the fact that He's hurt others, but 
He's focused in on God and he knows first and foremost, that's where his loyalty is, that he had sinned against God. David had shot an arrow through the heart of God. Listen, as long as you compare your sins with the sins of others, other people, you will never realize the full weight of your sin. No, we must compare ourselves to who God is. Who is God? He is holy. He is righteous. And He is just. David's sin brought punishment from the hand of God. And the reality is that God chastens those, chastens those whom He loves. And I've always said it's a good indicator that you belong to God. It's the chastening hand of God. He faced the reason for his sinning. Look at verse 5. He says, Behold, I saw... I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin my mother conceived me. Now David's not blaming his mother, or he's, and he's not blaming society for his sin, but he's blaming his sin nature. And the reality is, is that we've all, we all have a sin nature. We all have a, a bent towards sin, some more so than others. And, uh, and uh, it takes divine intervention for us to wake up and to see that. Uh, but David was a sinner. You know, not many in our society today will take responsibility for their bad choices that they make. We see this all across our nation today with, with all the lawlessness and everybody wants to make excuse for, for their sin. Someone else sins and their response is to go and do something even worse. And, uh, and, and they want to justify themselves. And, and the reality is, is that we've all sinned. David face the remedy remedy for his sins in verse 6 he said behold you desire truth in the inward parts and the inward the hidden part you will make me no wisdom david understood that he needed something more than turning over a new leaf he needed more than self-help books and seminars david needed to be forgiven he needed to be changed from the inside out and that's what we need we need to be changed from the inside out that all begins with a relationship with jesus christ so when we repent of our sins we accept his full payment uh, what he did on the cross his full payment for our sin and we receive him for salvation and then the bible says he comes in the holy spirit comes in to live within us and then god's uh, holy spirit guides us and he reveals to us things in our lives that, that need to change. And that change starts on the inside and it works its way out. He needed more than symptoms treated. He needed a problem treated. And that can only happen with God's intervention. We need our hearts cleansed. And we see David's confession of sin. David was led to a cleansing from sin by God. He asked God for forgiveness. Look at verse 7. He says, Purge me with hyssop and i shall be clean wash me and i shall be whiter than snow so he asked god to remove the cancer of sin uh, he says purge me with hyssop hyssop was a small plant that was used for sprinkling in the purification rites and that of a leper or um, a leper or uh, or one with cancer david's sin was like leprosy or cancer to him uh, today, we don't need holy water. Or we don't need hyssop sprinkled on our lives. Uh, no, Jesus shed his blood on the cross for our sin. The Bible says that without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. David asked God to remove the consequences of his sin. Look at verse 8. He says, Make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones you have broken may rejoice. His sin made him feel like his bones were breaking. Uh, have you ever been there? Have you ever been in that position to where you just almost you hurt because of the guilt of sin? Well, that's where David was. God would take that away from David, but he would have to live with some of the consequences. What were some of the consequences? Well, I, the one major consequence was that after David sinned with Bathsheba, she had a child, and uh, that child died in childbirth. And uh, that was heartbreaking to David and to Bathsheba. But once God had 
forgiven him of the sin that he had committed. We're told that he and Bathsheba had another child. God give them another opportunity. And of course, we know that child to be Solomon, uh, one of the greatest kings that ever lived in Israel. He asked God to remove the consciousness of his sin. And God will remove our sin, the Bible says, as far as the east is from the west, to never be brought up again. You know, I think that a lot of times that our biggest problem is not getting forgiveness from God, but many times we have problems forgiving ourselves when we sin against God. The good news of the gospel is, is that uh, not only do we get saved, but when after we are saved, when we can come back to the Lord for forgiveness of sin, and yes, He does remove our sin as far as the, the east is from the west. And uh, folks, we don't have to hang our heads in shame. Look, uh, we're a child of the King, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Uh, we're a part of a royal priesthood. We've been promised eternal life. And we know that, that, yes, it is true that we're not perfect, that we still falter, that we still sin, that we still uh, struggle with the flesh in this world. But there's coming a day when all that will go away and we'll be perfected. We will be like Him. Um, he, David asked God to restore a clean cleanliness of soul. Look at verse 10. He says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit. So David asked him to clean, give him a, a clean heart. And that ought to be the prayer of every believer is that, Lord, search my heart, try me. And if there's any unclean thing there, reveal it to me and that I might confess my sin. Lord, give me a clean heart. Give me a pure mind. Help me to think on things that are pure and holy and just and right. And I believe when we do that, that God will help us. He asked God to restore the consciousness of His salvation. He didn't ask Him to restore His salvation. He asked Him to uh, restore the consciousness of His salvation. He says, Do not cast me away from Your presence and do not take Your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of of thy salvation many times when we're troubled and we're perplexed and heartbroken depressed down and out uh, we need to uh, take a hard look on the inside and we need to make sure we're at the place we need to be with the lord and then we can come before him with boldness and say lord restore to me the joy of thy salvation we don't need to be saved again we just need god to restore the joy and the bible says that god will give us peace peace that passes all understanding. David acknowledged God's forgiveness in verses 13 through 19. A forgiven saint wants to praise the Lord. And I have to say amen to that. Verse 13, then I will teach your transgressors your way and sinners shall be converted to you. Well, let me just stop right there for just about half a second. We cannot teach and we cannot proclaim the gospel when we have sin in our life. See, David knew that he could not serve the Lord he could not do for God what God wanted him to do with sin in his life. He had to come with confession. He had to ask forgiveness of sin. And then God could use him. Then he could teach transgressors his ways. And then verse 19, we see David rejoice. He says, Deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, O God, the God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall show forth your praise. He will fervently witness. That is, a believer will fervently witness to the goodness and faithfulness of God when he is in a right standing with God. He will faithfully worship the Lord as well. A forgiven saint wants to please God. His praise will come from a broken heart. Verse 19, For you do not desire sacrifice, or else I will give it. You, delight, you do not delight in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God, this is key, a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. These, O oh God, you will not despise. The saint of God will come, will, his prayers will come from a broken heart. Verse 18, and do good in your good pleasure design, build the walls of Jerusalem. Then you shall be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness, with burnt offering and whole burnt offering. Then they shall offer bulls on your altar. God is calling the church to repentance. God's calling each of us to repentance of sin. Listen, I know we have a lot of concern for our nation. 
a lot of concern for what's going on in our world today. But we need to start with ourselves. This is where it begins. The Bible says judgment begins at the house of God. If we're going to see revival as we alluded to in 2 Chronicles 7.14 uh, just a few weeks ago, listen, we, it has to begin with a heart change in our own lives. Oh, I, I know that people are praying all over the world and all over our nation for, uh, for this country right now. But folks, we need to do we need to do a check on our own doorstep. We need to make sure that we are right with God. And then and then God will hear from heaven. Then God can answer our prayers. Then God can move in our life. Then we can have victory in Jesus Christ. And uh, praise God, we serve a risen Savior, a risen Lord, and uh, He is the answer to whatever you're dealing with today. And uh, He is the answer to what's going on in our society today. It's, this world is not going to change because of uh, social programs and, and what comes out of Washington. No, this world is going to change when, when the people of God get right with God. And then we'll see change in the church and we'll see change in our communities because we can introduce them to the one who can bring about real change. Change that starts on the inside and it works its way out. Well, God bless you, and I love you, and I'm so glad that you've joined me today. Uh, we want to spend a little bit of time in prayer, and I have uh, several prayer requests I'm going to mention. If, if you have any, please type those in for me or send those to me through our prayer email. Uh, Sherry Cheney uh, had mentioned that her un uncle Tom Durant uh, passed away. This I believe it was just this week, so we want to be in prayer for that family. Also, we want to be in prayer for Billy Moore, Pat Prasine's brother-in-law, and uh, want to pray for Kelly Weldon. Uh, she has not been well over the last few weeks, and uh, she is going to uh, see the doctor tomorrow about that again, and they're hopeful they can uh, figure all this out. So just be in prayer for Kelly and Billy as well. And um, let's pray for our election that's coming up. I can't uh, stress that enough. Pray, pray, pray. Hey, listen, uh, we do have a praise report. Amy Barrett was nominated, confirmed, and sworn in as our new uh, Supreme Court Justice, and we praise the Lord for that tonight, and we want to pray for her and pray for her family, and uh, we want to continue to pray for our president, uh, Donald Trump, and also pray for Vice President Mike Pence, and Pray for their families, and uh, we need to pray for both houses, and uh, pray, for, pray for Congress, and just pray that God would work in their midst, and and uh, I just pray that this election would go uh, the way God would have it to, and uh, come what may, folks, God's still on the throne. We'll still praise Him, and we'll still carry the gospel to a lost and dying world. Let's... Uh, pray for our troops tonight and uh, we want to be in prayer for our police officers across our nation we know that there's been several riots here lately and pray that that god would uh, work in their midst and also let's be in pray, prayer for our teachers and our students that are going back to school and uh, we just want to pray for their protection as well anybody else any prayer requests that you'd like to share with me let me look here. Anyone else? Any prayer request? If you have one, please feel free to share it. We'll be in prayer for our services this week. If there are no others, Again, let me remind you, use our prayer at fbcjewett.org uh, email if you have some you'd like to send us uh, at other times during the week. And we'll be sure to pray for those requests. Join me in prayer now at this time. Heavenly Father, we thank you for uh, the day you've given us. And God, uh, thank you for all your blessings, God. We thank you for the rain that you've sent our way. And, and Lord, uh, just thank you for life itself, Lord. You are so good to us. We could never praise you enough for who you are. 
And uh, Lord, uh, I do pray that you would search our hearts and try us, God. And God, if there's anything in our lives that uh, we need to repent of, I pray that you'd reveal that to us, Lord. And, and God, uh, I just pray that your church would be the church that you've called it to be. Oh God, how I, I praise you for your goodness. And I, I just praise you, Lord, that, that Lord, you're still on the throne today, God. And I pray, Father, that you would just give me, give your church wisdom, give us vision uh, for the future. And uh, Lord, I pray that you'd help us to reach our community with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray for Sherry Cheney and her family, the Durant family, and the passing of Tom Durant. And Lord, I pray for Billy Moore, uh, Pat Prasine's brother-in-law. And Lord, um, I pray for Miss Kelly tonight. I pray, God, that you give her healing and strength for her body and be with Billy. And uh, Lord, uh, I do pray that you'd be with uh, President Donald Trump, be with Mike Pence, be with Congress. And um, Lord, tonight as uh, we come together online, I know, Lord, that we have uh, police officers, Lord, who are putting their very lives on the line as they try to, uh, um, Lord, as they try to bring calm to these cities that are plagued with riots and violence and, and uh, God, just lawlessness. And I pray, God, that you give them guidance and helping them to make good decisions, Lord. And I pray for our school teachers and I pray for our students that are going to school and in the school administration and i pray god that you would watch over them and care for them and lord um we're thankful tonight for what we hear uh, coming out of israel lord with all the peace treaties that are being signed and lord with some of these countries that have been lord enemies of israel for so many years and i just pray that that would continue god and i uh, i do pray for netanyahu and his family and just pray god that you would bless their Lord, uh, go with us this week. Uh, watch over your church until we meet again this Sunday at 11 o'clock. Prepare our hearts, Lord, for what you have in store for us. Help us to be a witness and a light for you everywhere we go. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. God bless you this evening and thanks for joining me. And uh, we'll come back together again uh, for prayer and Bible study next Wednesday at 5 o'clock. Uh, before then, hope to see you Sunday at 9.45 for Sunday school and then church at 11. God bless you. Have a great week.